Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Hit and Hustle, um, a YouTube show from irishsportsdaily.com. I am Greg Flamong. That is Jamie Uyama. We are completely doing an audible today. So we had originally scheduled um, to talk about the spring in the spring game. We had a whole plan lined up and everything. And um, and and then Abubakar Triore, a four-star defensive lineman, committed to Notre Dame. And so we are we are completely overhauling the episode. We are going to talk his commitment. We are going to talk uh, the commitments of Sam Pendleton, offensive lineman. And Braylon James, which we did not get to talk about because I was out last week. So we didn't get to talk about him. Um, and then we'll go over some of the um, some of the the news out of uh, the spring game and the, the recruiting and the commitments and and uh, guys that Notre Dame is trending for and that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to touch on today. And um, next time we'll, we'll do a deep dive into the spring. We'll look at film and we'll do all that fun stuff. So, um, Jamie. You uh, were ready to go with this one. You uh, you had your uh, in the film room um, uh, film room kind of article ready to go on Triore when he committed, and 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 I suggest everyone go to irisportsdaily.com and take a look at that. But tell us about um, Bubakar Triore as a player and um, what Notre Dame is getting um, from him. Well, I mean, everybody knows, or, or people who are following it uh, closely know that Trey was uh, a Boston College commit before, and um, not typically the kind of guy who commits to Boston College, even though he's, you know, uh, a New England guy. Um, but just in terms of like you look at his raw talent, they don't land a lot of guys like that. Um, I would say Al Washington should know because he is a BC guy, right? right. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a guy who, um, you know, kind of like blew up a little bit, um, in, in early 2021 and camp stuff. And that's how he kind of got on the radar and just like, just big, like trait the kind of traits that you're looking for of a guy who's like plays defensive end, but he's going to be a three tech. Um, so just long arms, like pretty good, big hands, like, uh, got good twitch. He can like, you know, turn the corner, um, and, and show that kind of flexibility, like really, really high pass rush upside. And that's why he's like a four-star kid. And I know like, uh, like a couple plays places have him as a top 100 kid. I think I want to kind of see a little bit more from him, but, um, certainly just like talent wise, um, way, way up there. Like you can understand how he could be, um, not quite unlike how we're key on Keeley where you saw, and you're like, this guy could be a five-star, but if you told yeah. me like Trey or like, you know, a few years down the line, this guy's going to be like a, a day one or a day two pick in the NFL. Like he has that kind of, um, he just has that kind of body and that kind of traits where you, you look at him and you're like, man, this guy's got some great ability if he like develops. Yeah. So right now he's, he's projected as a, um, I guess he's plays defensive end, but do you, do you think he's projected to be like a three tech as he, yeah, definitely a three, three tech. Um, I'm thinking it'll be interesting, you know, because if you look at say like a guy like him and Brendan Vernon and Vernon might even be like a guy, I mean, he's like, Vernon's like 280 now. He was like, yeah, he's a big guy. You see all the pictures of him from the, uh, the spring game and he's, he's really filled out. Yeah. Um, so He's going to be, I mean, he's another guy who's probably like a three tech, but maybe even a guy who can play three and a little bit of one, like depending how big he gets, like a little bit of Gabriel Rubio ish, you know what I mean? Where maybe you thought he was a three tech and now he's kind of more of a one tech. So that's where you could kind of see something like that. I could kind of see that with Vernon. Um, but you have like a bunch of guys now that I think, um, you know, where if you look at like the, the next cl- class too, right. Where they just got the, the commitment from the 2024 kid, Brandon Davis Wayne, I'm sure her, we'll talk mm-hmm. about it in a sec, but yeah. he's another kid. Who's like a three tech playing a little bit of end playing a little bit of inside, but he's probably going to be a three tech too. And if that's, if you stay four now, but now you kind of have, if you're landing enough of these guys, especially enough quality guys, you might be able to just say like, well, we have like the personnel where maybe we want to play, um, more three down and do a little bit more stuff with like um, whether it's like three, three, five or, or just like standard three, four, you could do a little bit more 
things with that, right? Where the Viper becomes one guy. And then obviously, you know, the Rover becomes like another guy, especially if you're going to play like guys like a Botello there or, right. um, you know, Will Schweitzer worked in the spring game there too, right? Like, so there's a little bit, you can kind of see where um, Notre Dame a couple years down the road, um, you know, could that could kind of morph into that just based on those, uh, how they're doing it. So, I, I man, they're going to be loaded at at three tech in in, in a couple years um, with what they're doing. It's it's impressive. You had mentioned on a uh, power hour that that the three tech was like you couldn't find one. You that, like three four years ago, Notre Dame could not find a three tech um, to save their lives, and now there's just a, a, just a, a gluttony of of that type of player. It's just such a such an interesting. Um, shift from from what we're used to so um just a little bit of particulars on treori so he's listed as 65 235 he's uh on the 247 sports composite he's uh 153 overall um and you know he he was obviously previously committed to boston college he had uh offers from michigan wisconsin schools like that so um i guess we can we can kind of go into what just for a second, like what this kind of means for the defensive line class um, going forward? Um, because you know we know that they have, let's say they have Brennan Vernon, they have Bubakar Traore, and they're still after Jason Moore, who is who's kind of is is. Would you say that Jason Moore is kind of in the same mold as like he's a defensive end now, but will move inside? Is that yeah. all kind of the same? Like, how do you how do you see this affecting it? Like, do you think Notre Dame will will continue to push for more? My sense is that they will, but um, how, what is your view on that? I think they will. I just think he's a guy with like a similar kind of. So this is a top fifty player as well, right? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I would say like a top hundred guy at least, and like. Um, just another guy that you look at him and you're like, man, he's both him and Trey, you look at them. Um, and even though he's ranked higher than Trey, I, I would say kind of like similar ceilings for both those guys mm -hmm. were, and, and both of them are just like kind of scratching the surface of the kind of players um, they're going to be. Um, but it, it, it's, yeah, it's funny because I think Notre Dame really had a, lot, a hard time finding guys who were like, have this kind of like length and athleticism, there that uh on the defensive line it didn't matter where it was at, at outside or inside or wherever they just had problems which is one of the reason why like kind of getting a, a jerry tillery who was you know obviously first projected as a right. as a offensive lineman right and kind of him kind of turning into that kind of guy was like that's why he's like such a unicorn for what they've done and even if you've seen what they've we've had after that um you know with guys like MTA and, and Heinish and, um, you know, and, and Jason Adam Alola and Jacob Lacey and Howard Cross. I, I mean, they're all good players, but they're like not the same kind of like they're, they're going to be viewed, especially going to the next level as, you know, limited because, you know, unless you're like Aaron Donald, um, I mean, it's very hard to play in the NFL unless you have like incredible length and just unique twitch and whatever and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of those guys who have like boxes that they're not going to check for guys where these guys, you could see there's a lot more of that. So I, I would say with more, um, yeah, I, I would still push for him. And, and then I think too, like it said, it get, like I said before, it gives you the flexibility. I didn't mention, you know, Preston Zinner, who's another guy who I think could play as another one of those kind of like, if you were, if, if Notre Dame was currently running uh, like, you know, a three, four defense, you'd be like, this guy's an outside linebacker, right? He's an outside yeah. linebacker in a three, four, and that's how you'd view him. Right. So I think, man, I, I think it's going to be really interesting to kind of see what they do, but, um, and it's actually something I was planning on writing about in six thoughts for tomorrow is that I, I just think that they're going to be able, because they've recruited so well and they're doing so well right now, they can kind of be, um, uh, adaptable, right. And, and, and agile with how they're going to approach it based on like, you know, all these, all this talent they're getting in the front seven. It's just incredible. 
Yeah, and uh, let me see if I can pull up some film here. I've been trying to uh, get this going for you. Um, let's see if I can do this. All right. Because I want to get people a sense of, um, you know, Treori the player. Um, is that coming up? Um, yep, yep. No, there we go. Up, yeah. All right. There we go. All right. Let me just put this on. All right. And as we're watching this, you can just kind of talk through it um, and discuss, you know. Yeah. So this is from is. his, this is from his even sophomore year. So you get like a little bit of it with him, but uh, obviously he's making the sack there. Right. And you can yeah. see how he's kind of long and like here, he's kind of like more thin, obviously, but here, there you go. Yeah. Speed to power right there. You got to love to see that come back to the football. Um, but really like, I think, you know, I, I think he's, you know, you've seen him, like you said, 235 and maybe 24 seven. I think we have him like in the 250 range. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's a lot heavier than that now. I would be surprised because, like, I think he was. He like, looks thicker. I think he was watching. like two fifty something as a sophomore. So, I he's got to be in the two seventy ish range. I I would expect so. Kind of like how like when there were like there were people on like ISD's board who were asking about Brett and Vernon. Like, I'm not sure he's going to be a detail. He's only two thirty nine. I'm like, he's not two thirty nine anymore, right? <laughs> like, so I I think it's kind of similar um, with Traore. Like, he is just much much bigger than that and you know the thing is with me is that i i always look for with defensive linemen of course you want the, the physical traits and he kind of checks those boxes right so you got that but it's like twitch you know like get off right lateral movement uh like power like heavy hands and a lot of the guys too even if they're super strong and i think mm -hmm. he shows like pretty good strength but you know maybe they're not the best in terms of hand placement. That's the kind of thing that maybe that's comes up with time, right? Then comes with time, right. the technique. And usually, usually um, not every one of them, but a lot of these guys, uh, Siri, you see a good job there, just uh, yeah. pressing and shedding there. Right. But, um, but usually a lot of these guys, it takes them a while to kind of get that down because the coaching isn't the greatest, right? Mm -hmm. Your, your defensive line coach at a high school, unless these guys are doing private coaching too, most of these guys aren't getting the, anywhere close to the kind of coaching that they're going to get. Like when he's going to, when he plays for Al Washington. Right. So that's the one thing. And, and, and especially too, when you're looking at a guy who's playing against the kind of competition he's at, and I'll say there's way more guys in the new England area that have like been like blue chip guys recently, but you, and you, you grade them that because of the traits, but not because of the competition. Because when I look at like, the competition i see like the kind of competition i faced in high school in like you know pacific northwest of canada yeah. it wasn't great right it wasn't great there wasn't a lot of d1 kids that i was going against and so i i would say like you know you look at that and you say oh you know how's he gonna adjust and you grade it on the traits and all that kind of stuff and, and yeah. where it goes from there yeah all right i'm gonna pull up a comment from uh or a question from Chief Brody, was this a surprise commitment? I do not think it was. Um, I think that everyone kind of knew when he came. I mean, commitment watch, right? Like that's the term that people love to use. And I think that was I, – I, I don't want to say the expectation, but um, we had kind of talked about – you know, you started posting videos on Twitter, and I, and I kind of – got my, like my, my hairs, you know, sticking up a little bit. So I asked you about it. Like, is he going to, could he pop? And you said, yeah, he might. So, um, you know, so I think people saw it coming. Um, and so, you know, he, they, and basically as soon as he it. had decommitted from Boston college, it was, that was like, like uh, uh, Tuli Halamaka in that, in that way, actually. Yes. Yeah. Very, very similar. Right. Where yeah. when that happened, people were like, Oh, I, I think Notre Dame, and it didn't happen right away with Tui Halamaka, but it people kind of knew it, and then he took his official, and then whatever, and obviously with Trevor, this wasn't official, it was an unofficial, but that's what kind of, people are just kind of waiting for the visit to kind yeah. of do it, and you know what? Sometimes it looks like it's going to happen that way, and then guys come on the visit, and they're like, ah, it's not for me, right? That happens, mm -hmm. right? But obviously he went, and it kind of checked all the boxes, and he's liking it, and I think it just makes sense. I think he's a he's a he's a good fit, good good fit all around for Notre Dame. All right, um, let's talk about um, Sam Pendleton, who recently just committed to Notre Dame. Um, 
some some places have him rated as a three star athlete. Some uh, offensive linemen. Some people have him as a four star. Where, where did you le- uh, end up on him, Jamie? I had him as a four star. Um, I actually watched him like again right before um, you know he was going to announce his commitment, and I actually bumped his grade up um, because I liked him more than I than I originally did when right. I first watched him, and. Man, I think he's I think he's underrated nationally, and I think he might be a guy too that I might even be like too low on. Now uh, I gave him a grade of ninety one, so like a low four star. Okay, so uh, so that's but, actually the same grade as Treori you gave him, I think. Yeah, As a matter of yes. fact, yes, that is true. And, and and I have a feeling like Pendleton, who was a guy who didn't really like blow up until kind of a little bit later, like um, you know, early spring, he started to kind of like the offer starting to kind of come in, but like, he's a big kid. Um, I think he's a guy who projects to guard, probably going to play guard, but I think he's like a swing guy who's kind of got good enough feet to play tackle. I think he's really um, like way better in pass pro than you see a lot of kids in terms of just like his ability to mirror, uh, you know, really strong punch. Um, And sometimes I think with big kids, all these guys are going to be bullies when you're 300 pounds. And you are like driving a kid 10 yards down the field. It's like, well, of course you're going at your 305 pounds and you're driving a kid. So here's him just like destroying a kid. And that's going to happen. You want to see it. I'm not saying you don't right. want to see it. Right. But a lot of guys can do that. And it's some of the other things that you see that are even more impressive. So like here punch, like, boom, like just sticks that dude. Like the, the guy's running backwards. Like, mm-hmm. You don't see that a lot. You don't see that a lot. Just so like knee bend, right? Just like balance, control, all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, man, yeah, I think this kid has a really high ceiling. I think I, I think he has a really, really high ceiling. And he could probably be a guy who could play multiple spots on the line. Um, and, yeah, I just think that he's probably someone that later on, if you said he ended up being like a top 150 kid, eventually like i would not be surprised right so this is the first offensive lineman in the class um uh, for 2020 2023 yeah um and they are they are currently um so they, they landed him they're currently favored for i don't maybe not favored they're they're they're, they're in it with clemson for sullivan absher um and yeah they're, good spot they're, for him what's that they're in a good spot for him. Yeah, they're in a good spot. It seemed like he loved his visit, um, and I suggest everyone go to irisportsdaily.com, and, and um, there's a good update on him. And um, so how many offensive linemen would you say Notre Dame is looking to take in the, the 2023 class? So let's just go through guys that they've been linked with heavily, right? So the, obviously Pendleton is in the uh, – Pendleton's in fold right now. You have Absher. You have um, Charles Degusa, who Notre Dame has been um, linked with for a long time. It's between Notre Dame and Michigan there. And then there is uh, Monroe Freeling, offensive lineman, who um, top 100 player, I think. And then you have Austin. How, how, do you know how to say his last name? I think it's it, I think it's Severveld, but Severveld. I, I, I he's I could be wrong. Okay, so he announced his. Um, he announced that he's going to be committing on May 5th. Um, and that one is between Notre Dame, Ohio State, and, Ohio and State. Alabama. And I think, right. I think it's, but I think it's really ND in Ohio State. Right. And uh, I would say everything you hear kind of is a toss up right now. Right. So how do you see, um, how many, how many do you see Notre Dame taking? Do you see them taking all five? Um, I, I imagine that Jagusa and Freeling have spots. Um, how do you, how do you see that playing out with with the um, in addition to Pendleton? Um, I don't see them taking five. I mean, they could, I guess, but I like they really took they took ten in the last two classes, right? So, um, the, you know, and it's like ten who 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 you feel pretty good about, right? Yes, it's one thing to take a, a lot of numbers, and it's like oh, you aren't sure, but like you know that you know that um, that Blake and Alt are hits. Yeah. And you have a good feeling about Spindler at this point. You have a pretty good spring. Um, and then, you know, guys like uh, 
um, Shrouth and, and, and guys like that. It just seems like there are hits there. So it's like, it's a real 10, you know what I mean? It's sometimes it's like, it's 10, but it's like, ah, oh, you're not really sure. Like, this is actually like a quality group. Like you've got some hits in there. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would say that the one thing that makes me think that they could maybe take five is one. And I, this is just pure speculation. I haven't heard anything or whatever, but you know, when you hear about Joey Tonona's car accident yeah, and how serious that is, like, I do wonder because there's a lot of guys who, if there's something like that happens, like, I mean, I, I don't know how healthy he's going to be again. And that's like I, a head injury too. Yeah. It's right. Like so not, you don't want to, I mean, I, I sincerely hope that he's able to play again, but I don't know. I don't know. Right. So that might be something that kind of dictates whatever, right. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe there's another injury or something going on with some other guy that they don't, that they're not disclosing. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the, here's the other thing. Harry, he stands coming in. Those aren't, I mean, they're his guys now, but they're technically not the guys that he evaluated. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's all point. guys that, he, I mean, and Harry, he said has a much different style than Jeff Quinn as a coach. So are all these guys going to like fit with what Harry wants? Right. And mm -hmm. are all those guys going to want to do what Harry wants? Like there's all these kind of things too. So maybe there might be some attrition and maybe they think that's why they would take five, but my guess would be they'll take four. They'll take four. And, uh, um, I, I, I would be surprised if they took five, like 15 and three classes is that's a lot. Like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a lot. And also to Harry, he said, and I know that he, it's different. And I don't know how much, um, you know, before with him, he was notoriously picky about, you know, which guys he liked. Also had an incredible eye. If you look at like the offer list of the guys that he did, like very few of the guys didn't, whether they went to Notre Dame or not, didn't end up being like really good players in college or going on to be high picks, whatever. Right. So he's obviously a great evaluator, but you know, there are a lot of classes where they were like, they didn't like enough of the guys. He wasn't like, Oh, you know, Notre Dame's got to take some more kids. They got to offer more guys late. And that wasn't the case that, or that, that like they never did that with him. So yeah. I don't know if, you know, it's not like obviously these guys are already on the board and, and guys that Harry likes, but I don't know. That, don't know if they're gonna. Sorry, I think it's there, froze there. Froze yeah, froze. Second. All right, you're back. You're back. Okay, good. All right. So feel good about offensive line at the moment. Um, I would say of all the guys that I mentioned, I think Notre Dame's in a really good spot. Um, it sounds like from talking to Matt and Christian, um, it sounds like, it, you know, Notre Dame is, is in a good place for those guys. Um, and, and another position, you know, making the transition that um, it appears Notre Dame is in a good spot with um, – that it wasn't totally sure, you know, we weren't sure how that was going um, about a month ago as wide receiver. So last week they picked up Braylon James, top 100 player out of Texas, and they had Jaden Greathouse on, on campus uh, over the weekend along with Rodney Gallagher. And, and from talking to Matt and talking to Christian, it sounds like it went really well with those guys. And obviously it's vitally important, right? Because anyone who watched the spring game knows like that there's just not a lot of numbers at wide receiver right now, um, which isn't to say anything of how talented the group, you know, the wide receiver group is on campus, which we think it's, you know, a pretty talented group of guys. But if there's only going to be like three or four or five, that's not going to work, right? They, they're yeah. going to need more than that. So you need to load up, on, you need to load up on numbers. You need to load up on, um, on talent. And, you know, we know they're heavily in it with, with um, five-star quarterback Dante Moore. And, you know, that situation, I think everyone is kind of in a holding pattern with that. I think, you know, talking to Matt and Christian again, it seems like they're still confident. But, you know, the longer this plays out, the longer that, um, you know, that kind of goes on, you get a little bit nervous, right? Like you just don't – you want the guys in fold. Um, 
you know, obviously adding top flight wide receivers is going to help with that. Um, so we'll have to see where it goes with the, with great house and Gallagher, but they did get, uh, Braylon James in fold last week. So, um, let's talk about the, uh, the top 100 player from Texas. Yeah. He's a, I mean, a fast kid ran a four, four, seven at a camp. Uh, I believe he jumped 38 inches. So he's a, he's a really, really good athlete. Um, a guy who's going to be a vertical threat, um, you know, in, in the passing game, I would say he's probably about six one, six two. Um, I think he plays a little bit bigger, like he can get up and kind of yeah. Uh, he like looks he looks more. long to me. Yeah. Um, so I think he's like a guy who's probably going to be a boundary guy uh, at, at Notre Dame. Um, you know, could play uh, could play the field a little bit too. Um, but I mean, I I really like his game. I I think he's. Um, you know, needs to be uh, like a lot of kids. Needs to be a, a lot more refined as a route runner. Right. Um, but just he's got that gear. He's got that extra gear. Um, obviously, you know, uh, and, and a guy that Notre Dame just hasn't landed a lot of guys like um, since uh, since uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Austin and, and uh, Jordan Johnson the only top 100 receivers they land. So it kind of puts into perspective, like you know where. How, how important a guy like this is to the class. So yeah, uh, needless to say, great, a great start to get him as the first receiver in the class. What struck me when, when I was watching these highlights originally is he's the up back in all of these. And like, who is their, uh, who is their returner that this guy is the, uh, I was his, thinking the same thing. The I'm like, back. also too, why are they kicking? I mean, he must be, yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. They're like, hey, let's kick, kick it to the other guy, the national recruit who's the up back instead of like it. Yeah, it made no sense to me when I was watching that, too. Yeah, the up back who up back at a top 100 player is uh, is not your regular. Know, return yeah, man. yeah it funny. must be nice to be in Texas. There's they yeah. probably got some other like track kid who runs like a 10 400 meters. Just look at the, uh, look at the like, catch, the catch radius there. I mean, that's yeah. what like he might be 6'2 or 6'1 or whatever he is. But he plays bigger than that. Yeah. Um, and and body me, like, control. Like, yeah. This is my, he is my, or I, I should say was, he was my least favorite type of receiver to cover because you're always worried about his acceleration off the line. Like, he can, he can run by you. Look at, look at here again. Like this, just, like, just taking it away. Yeah. You can just go get it. And he, you're always worried about him running by you because he has that, that just off the line acceleration. Um, that is just a big concern, right? Like here he's, he's straight up double teamed. He's got press with the safety and he, he beats it. So yeah, you're always worried about that. He has the size. He can go over top of you if he wants. He can, um, he can he can he can run by you if he wants and and then that just sets up everything else shorter right look at this yeah they got three <laughs> it's just three guys look at four four players and he beats all of them he was bracketed by basically four um and he beats him still so this is a, a really explosive player really dynamic in the open field he's a hurdler which I mean, look, to be a hurdler and to be like a 110, 300 hurdler, like you have to be a very good athlete, right? Yeah. Because running the top speed – and like it's one thing to – like I am – like some people are hurdlers, right? But it's like you're not running top times. It's one of those things that's like, hey, I'm doing hurdles because I'm not winning the sprints. Like James is breaking, you know, 14 seconds in the hurdles, which is – which is really good for a high school athlete, right? Yeah. Track's obviously not going to be his thing. He's not like a, like a, like a. Comedian. Yeah, he's not going to be a world class hurdler, but like. Yeah, yeah, but but to break fourteen as a hurdler when it's like something you're not doing all the time, takes really good athleticism, takes really good feet, takes really good explosiveness, and all those things. So, super excited about um, Braylon James as a prospect. Love watching his film. Um, that's another one, like tippy toe yeah. in the corner. Really good stuff. All right, so yeah. so we have Notre Dame has Great House. They have Gallagher. Those are two basically borderline um, top 100 players. 
Um, I think Gallagher is 100% a top 100 guy. Like, I I don't, I don't understand why he's not, like, just because of size, maybe. Like, he's just – Well, he's, he's a two-sport guy. Athlete. He's a two-sport yeah. guy, which generally to me, hurts. that just – bump him up because of that. Like, you can just see the athleticism. The guy yeah. is a freak athlete. Like, yeah. he is – he is Electric with the ball in his hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, to me, he – you know, you got James, you got this vertical threat, you got a guy and not just a vertical threat who can just run by people, but also a guy can get up. So perfect kind of guy that Notre Dame obviously needed in the class. But then you got Gallagher, who obviously plays quarterback for his high school. But the whole thing is just get the ball in his hands and what he can kind of do and what, you know, the different ways you can get him the ball and the screen game and turning like, um, some of the stuff that Lorenzo Styles did last year, where yeah. you're like turning yeah. in like a, you know a, a ball thrown two yards behind the line of scrimmage, you take it for forty because you get a step on the guy, and he's got that kind of speed, um, and that kind of ability, and just like natural instincts uh, uh, with the ball in his hand. So, um, to me, it, that's like a, a crucial guy. Like I, I, I know there was like you know before the visit, it was kind of seen as. Uh, maybe they might may not get them. Maybe it's trending away, whatever. But like that, to me, if if they are able to bring the, him in with Braylon James, like, and I know Great House is a pr- prospect I like too, and and you know they're probably going to do pretty well. Like yeah. I would imagine they're going to take four, at least four, and and get four pretty good ones. But I, I just think Gallagher is the next most important guy. Yeah, I mean they don't really have anyone like him on the roster at the moment, so. Um... That's a good skill set to to get in with. A um, couple things first. Um, I think this is Matt put it on the thing. If you're new here, I, there's a there's a good amount of people in the in the in the chat or in the chat right now watching the feed. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Hit all those things. Hit the like button. Um, it just gets us out there more to uh, you know get the content out to more people. More people get to see the show. Helps grow the channel and all those things. Um, and we we like to have a good time here. We like to just kind of talk about the team, and we love talking about the team. And um, we're going to be do more of these things, and especially in the summer um, when I'm not as busy. I'm we're going to be doing a lot more live videos and breaking down film and all those things. So please hit the subscribe, hit the like button, and um, tell other people about the channel if you, if you if you like what we're doing here. And I want to highlight Michael, who is just fired up today. And I don't want to. Uh, he sent a lot of messages in the chat. I live near Gallagher. Kid is a game changer. We totally agree with that. Uh, but Michael's fired up. We're fired up to have Michael in with us. Um, so this is all a very good time. So, um, all right. So at wide receiver right now, there is there is Braylon James, who has committed. We have Jaden Greathouse, who it appears um, Notre Dame is in good shape with, along with Rodney Gallagher. Rico Flores is going to be coming for the June 10th visit. Um, the official visit, June 10th weekend, we're, we're going to be talking about that because that is lining up to be an enormous recruiting weekend for Notre Dame. I mean, there's going to be so many like top 150, top 100 five-star prospects like on campus. I can't remember a time when there were an official visit in the off season that had this many top players and not just top players, but like guys you could actually like you really legitimately foresee Notre Dame ending up with. Um, so it's like a super exciting time for recruiting. Um, and that just not, that's not even factoring in like Dante Moore and whether he can make that visit. Like he's not even like at the moment, he's not, he's not scheduled to come on that. Uh, yeah. That I'd imagine so, they'll, that'll be the, I imagine they, they certainly him. want to, because there's going to be so many players. Um, Jamie, who else, at wide receiver, can you think of who who you would like Notre Dame to get involved with? I know I was watching Tyler Williams last night. Absolutely love his film. I love him as an athlete. Um, who 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 else were you thinking about? I mean, that would be great. Uh, I don't know what, what the, the the chances are of him. I think he's. I I do like like him a lot. Um, well, I know like. To me, I I think the guys you mentioned are like kind of like the top guys that have um that out of like the targets that they're after. Um, I'm certainly I should, I should mention Ronan of- Hannafin as well because he is a um he's uh he's he's recruited as an athlete, right? So Ronan Hannafin, I think he'll be there on the tenth as well. So 
Um, he's another one that I should mention. I like Ronan Hannafin as like a as a defense, like a rover. Type I guy. For, I mean, look, I I like his game as a safety. Um, I I like everyone as a safety. I think everyone should play safety. It's the greatest position on the field. Um, but I, you know, I, I to me. It's like get him on campus, whatever you want to do. Same thing with Micah Tease, honestly. Like Micah Tease, to me, if he wants to play receiver, then let's I go. I 100% would take Micah Tease. Let's, I think he's – Let's go. I, yeah. I, why, why um, would, I, I don't understand why anyone would even balk at that um, and on guy, staff or anyone. Oh, yeah. The guy that I really like, and I know Matt is a big fan of as well, and the guy that I uh, had in, in the ISD Fab 50 who wasn't really like uh, viewed as like a – now, I had him much higher than anyone else. Um, and then Notre Dame recently offered him too, is a kid out of Florida, Aiden Mizell. And he can he can flat out fly. Like he makes Braylon James look slow. This guy, okay. he's got what's another the, gear. What's what's the do you have a track time? Do I need to look it up? I he I don't I'm know what it, I don't know what the track time is, but I I mean if you told me it was like low tens, I would not be surprised. Like the guy. He touches the ball and it's gone. It's like he is he is absolutely like I I have no idea why. And I he's been kind of blowing up a little bit lately, but I have no idea why this guy, because he has a different gear than than anyone that I've seen on film this year at receiver. And I think it's a really good receiver class, but I just think he has there's a different level yeah. of speed with him. And hold on, I'll take it. Let's take a look at his. I'm uh, looking. I, I don't think. Oh, okay. All right. So we're looking at a four. He's a 47 nine, uh, 400 guy, which is good, which is really good. Okay. So if you're running 47 nine, I would imagine you are low 21s, um, maybe like in the 10 6, 10 5 range. If you're running that, which is, which is moving. Okay. So verified. I'll give I'll give you credit for that. Definitely, um, definitely a a, a a runner. I'm also too like to me like before. So, um, you know, and obviously he's not a, a guy who pl who plays receiver, but Jeremiah Love, like I didn't need to see his track times. I saw his track times. No, after, he yeah. I didn't he, need to I, see his track times. So I, I haven't like, seen Ed this Mizzou guy yet, has a so. different level. Watch him right after this, Greg, because I, I'm telling I, you, I, 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 he's got him. big time speed. Big time speed. Um, I can't. I can't imagine. I haven't seen anybody else faster on a football field than him in this class. So I. I think he's going to be. Um, you know, has a chance to be special. So are I you mean, talking about Mizell? Mizell. Mizell. Right. Yeah, I'll so, pull him up. Yeah. So I. I think. I mean, he's a Florida kid. You know, you always hear. Yeah, I don't know how much he likes the cold weather and like all that kind of stuff. Who knows, right? But like. Get this guy on campus, see what happened. Hopefully, like, you know, uh, Chancey Stuckey and uh, Marcus Freeman can create some magic. But, I mean, obviously, you see, like, 18 touchdowns, over 20 yards of catch. Yeah. Always a good sign. But, All right, like, let's oh, yeah. Just, oh, like, okay. When he looks on fast forward, but everybody else looks like they're, that's just, and it's just like, that's a lot of it. It's honestly, like, it's just, forget it like he's just he's 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 got just unique speed so you know who he looks like and maybe it's the number one is uh jameson williams he does have that he yeah like like that yeah so i really really like him i think there's room to obviously grow with uh, other parts of his game but i just think he's just like like this guy has the angle on him and it's just no chance like yeah and he's just kind of cruising too yeah um you know, and I always like call it easy speed, right? When a guy yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. you're yeah. like, he doesn't even look like he's running hard. Like he's just into it. And that obviously a lot of that comes from guys who run track, right? Right. Yeah. They just, they know how to run structurally. Know they know how to run. And that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the, a perfect example of the easy speed is uh, Ted, Ginn, Ted Ginn Jr. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like Ted Ginn, if you just watched him and you looked at his first few strides, you'd be like, yeah. This guy doesn't look that fast, but then you're like, he just took that 80 yards to the crib. Like, and it's just, that's kind of like, this guy has that kind of running style where you're just like, oh, he's just moves at a different level than, than everybody else. And, you know, obviously I just think if you can find guys who can really like just 
give them a just give them something and they're gone after the catch. I think that's kind of special. Those explosive plays, those are gold in college football. So uh, I'm a big fan of his. Yeah, Matt keeps screaming at me in text. Put it in, put it in the chat. Don't yell at me on my phone. He's yelling at me about <laughs> Aiden Mazel and like pull up the highlights and yeah. stuff. I know to pull up the highlights. Yeah, put it in chat. Yell at me on my phone. No, he's a good player. He yeah. no, he looks fantastic. All right, let, let's uh, let's say it. All right, Notre Dame, get in on him, make it happen. Yeah, they have, um, they've offered him. They've offered him in, like in the last week. So, um, I mean, what I say, what I say. Look, this is what I say. You know, you have you have um, you have Braylon James in fold. You have Great House and Gallagher. I say focus on those guys. You know, they're coming on the tenth. So you focus on them, get them in the class, and f- get them in the class, and then you move on to the next ones, right? And you got Ronan Hannafin too. Like to me, you get Gallagher, get Great House, get um, get Hannafin. You already have James, and then you 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 put it way on like Mizell. And you put it way on uh, to like Tyler Williams if he's interested, right? Come on campus for a game, right? Come see, you know, and and that's that's the move you make because if you're if you have four like that, then you shoot for the stars with someone like yeah. Mizell. And um, well, the other thing is to you know just because you're going to look at it because Notre Dame's going to get more commitments before June, yeah, and they'll have to make some decisions on some guys, I, I'm sure. Um, you know, everybody wants to take everybody, but you can't always do it. Um, you know, uh, but obviously, I mean, with the, the way they, they're recruiting right now, you might as well load up. But yeah. I, I do think that, you know, like how you look at last year, where there was a bu- quite a number of guys who had, um, they had uh visits set up and then all of a sudden, you know, three days earlier before they're like, oh, he's not coming on this visit anymore. And it was like Notre Dame's decision, basically, right? So that's something also not – I imagine most of those June 10th guys are going to come, but it's something to think about um, with some of some of the other guys maybe that we even haven't named that uh, there's guys you're like, oh, this guy's – and it's just it's just a fact when, like, uh, one thing you say about Marcus Freeman era, he literally has not – there there has not been – a player that has committed to the program since him, since he took the job that hasn't been at least a four-star recruit. Like everyone is at very, very minimum of a a four-star and it's a pretty good run. It's a pretty good run to start. So uh, I think it's going to keep, keep rolling too. So, and you just hear like, they, they, they come out of these visits and you know, like they, you have like such a big, um, like I remember, the USC game last year, it was it was billed as this huge recruiting weekend, and I don't want to say it flopped or anything, but it, it like the the news coming out of it wasn't what you expected based on. I don't want to say the hype, but yeah, it just it didn't it it, it wasn't it wasn't like you know a lot of it was like oh you know it was nice but you know we'll see and that sort of thing. This was like they had this weekend, and. I was talking to Matt, talking to Christian, like everything they're telling me, telling me is like, oh yeah, like it was awesome. Like it went great. Yeah. They're in good position with this guy, good position with this guy. So I'm like, wow. Like, you know, you're just not used to that. Um, like there's so much believe it when you see it stuff with what's going on right now. But at the same time, like, and then the, you get a guy like Traore, who's a top, you know, 150 guy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, he, he came. Well, and they're going to try to get more too. And, and I think too, um, you know, so like the spring game and anyone who's been to the spring game, it's pretty boring. It's, yeah. it's not a, it's not the funnest experience. It's like the kind of, it's like going to an all-star game, like a, the NBA all-star game, whatever, which sounds cool, but it really is pretty boring because it's not, it's not like a real game. Right. So, right. and obviously there's, it's not the stadium's not full. And I think for that, for a lot of the reasons why Brian Kelly, like, especially towards the end of his time at Notre Dame, it kind of de-emphasized that as a recruiting weekend. They're like, it's more important to get guys up for practice. That's how they kind of view yeah. it. And where, you know, Freeman and the whole entire recruiting staff really kind of treated this as an event. And um, 
and I don't know if Notre Dame, I just think the fan base is too spread out forever for their, there to be 60,000 people at mm. a spring game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe if they're coming up back to back national championships, that'll be different or something. But like, I just don't see that happening at Notre Dame. It's just never really happened in my lifetime that I, I can remember. Maybe, maybe like a couple of years they had over 30 or whatever, but that was, you know, ab- about the, the peak of it, um, you know, which isn't even uh, half the stadium. Right. But yeah. I, I think, you know, um, when you look at it, it's not really about that. It's about like what, um, you know, the coaches and the staff and all that, and what they do to make the make it an experience for um, those players and and those recruits. And I think you know, obviously, bringing in all those former players on campus that helps yeah. too. That helps a lot. I think that is like the the big key what you talked about because you talk about an event. Well, if this if the focus is the spring game, then it will be boring because the spring game isn't meant to be more than that. Right. It's kind of de-emphasized from a, from a, from a team standpoint, right. They already had their spring with the, with that big scrimmage they had. Right. So like they're trying to, like the team is trying to get out of it without anyone getting hurt and they don't, they don't, it's the last day, you know, but you want there to be excitement. And so that's where, the uh the the bringing all the alumni like if that becomes a yearly thing it's one thing for fans to because like there were so many photos like going around on twitter and and, uh instagram and that sort of thing of like families and kids and get running into the former players and former players are taking pictures with them and signing autographs and that sort of thing former players bringing their kids and yeah having conversations like it's it's so much different when it's like, am I going to go to the spring game? It's like, I don't know. The game's not that fun. Yeah. But I'll go if I might. Oh, if you're going to have, yeah. If exactly. I might run into all these guys on campus and I might run into, you know, and the recruits the same way. Yeah. Like, I'll go to the spring game and, and hang out with, you know, Jerome Bettis or Kyle Hamilton or Kyron Williams and Chase Claypool and Ian Book and all these guys. Like, oh, yeah, I'll go do that. Yeah. If that's if because if if the game is just something that's kind of going on while while you're kibitzing with the rocket, you know, and so and then you have the dinner afterwards. Kibitzing, I I like the like the the grammar that I like kibitzing. Yeah, Yeah. kibitzing. Yeah, Yeah. hobnobbing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And like there's the dinner afterwards, like the alumni dinner, and they're all there, and there's all these, and so the players they get to meet all those guys and. And and there's the, the 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 stuff going on on Friday too. It's like that's that's well, where the value is. Here's something that's super underrated about all this too. So say a guy mm-hmm. like Emmett Mosley, who's obviously his son, Emmett Mosley. Yeah, his big son is also recruit, Emmett Mosley. Big time, big time recruit. recruit who they've offered in, in 2024, and like, you know, he they live in California, right? And his, uh, you know, so they live in California. How many times has Emmett Mosley been back to campus? Never heard of it. Maybe he has. Maybe he has. Maybe but maybe he has, but deal. it's not something you haven't heard about or whatever. It's definitely not something you've heard about. Like, you know, when he got there, he's like, "Oh, I've I've, I've come up every couple of years. I've been to games, whatever. Nothing like that." So, you want to get when it's time for these guys to become recruits because it's happened a lot. There's a lot of like. Notre Dame legacies. And then, yeah. and then whenever any of these guys who are good, you know, obviously you think of Anthony Barr or whatever, right. But you think of like a, just a million other guys that are Bobby good. Taylor jr. Yes. That are good. And then, so Bobby Taylor, perfect example. It's like, did that guy ever come back to campus? Probably not. Right. Yeah. And probably because he was like, no, oh, whatever. I don't, why don't I need to go back? I don't want to go up to Indiana. It's cold, whatever. But like, but if he's invited and make it seem like he's a priority and they're like, man, we're going to get guys here. Then that's different. Right. So, and a lot of these guys have like kids and, you know, with like grandkids or whatever, for some of the older guys and whatever that are good football players that have like, you want them to have a connection to the place too. And I know that's not why you do it. That's not the number one reason why you have all these guys back. But it doesn't hurt. It certainly doesn't hurt to have that many guys back and and have that kind of extra like connection and have these guys. It's like I've been to Notre Dame 
you know, even though like the, the power of Notre Dame is that you can like, you don't have to stay in Indiana to, you know, with your degree, you can live in California, you can live in Europe, you can live anywhere you want and be fine. And, 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 you know, that degree means something. Yes. That's the power of the Notre Dame degree. But if you want to have still people to be connected to the place, and if they're there and they're connected and the family's connected, and then their family just happens to have a kid who's like, <clears throat> maybe not even a football player. Maybe it's the a daughter who's like an unbelievable volleyball player or softball player or whatever, right? Like that helps, man. Like that's what you want. You want those people to stay connected. And uh, I don't know. I always just thought that was like a thing that was always like a missed opportunity for Notre Dame. So I'm glad they're taking advantage of it. Yep. All right. Sounds like a good place to leave it off. Um, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we really hope you had a good time. We had a good time talking about this. Um, for all the particulars on every, you know, recruit athlete that we're talking about, go to irisportsdaily.com. Matt and Christian had so much information about basically whoever you want to know about, right? If you want to know about Rodney Gallagher. You want to know about uh, Jaden Greathouse. Matt had a, had a terrific um, article out today talking to Peyton Bowen's mom who had, um, you know, Peyton Bowen's a commit in the class right now, top 100 safety and his younger brother, Eli, who's a 2024 player. He's a corner. Uh, she's just talking about, you know, what the, what the, uh, what the weekend was like, why it was a, was a, was a good time for them. You know, the, what they took away from it, why it was a special time. So I, I encourage everyone to go check out those things. Um, tons of great information um and again if, if you're new here click the subscribe button click the like button um we're going to be doing this uh, always you know we'll, we'll do it at least weekly if not bi-weekly um we got some stuff coming out i might do something uh for the draft um obviously we got the draft tomorrow um first round kyle hamilton is obviously uh projected to go in the first round and that's going to be a very exciting thing so um great great what, what, what okay hold on a second here but i gotta yes. interrupt here Yes. What happens if, say, top 10 happens, you know, you've seen some of these mock drafts. First of all, I mean, who knows? I, I think people have said that this is like the most unpredictable draft. in Yeah. Years, so we don't yeah. know what's going to happen. But, you know, you see a lot of mock drafts lately where Kyle Hamilton, you know, mocked to number 11 with Washington. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's say it comes up. He is dropped there. Right, I think he should be a top five pick, but if he's not, he's dropped to, to eleven. They hand in the card. It's not Kyle Hamilton. What? It, just to as, Washington as to Washington as the, the, with the eleventh pick. So you are the internet's number one Kyle Hamilton stand. Yeah, I think we can say that fact. Fact. Um, what is your reaction going to be? I if, mean, if, look. I and not just Washington. To me, look, someone is going to get a superstar, all right, whoever it is. And so, like, the way I look at it is you have the, the Giants and you have the Jets. They both have two picks in the top ten. You use two picks and you don't pick Kyle Hamilton like it's a blood Yeah, rivalry. yeah. That's, like, that's it's a, like, like, to me, yeah. it's a blood rivalry. I'll never get over it. Like, I, I, will, like, I will shun yeah. you like you are shunned. Okay, and I have friends, very good friends, who are Giants fans, and I, I, I just, I, I won't, I won't ever overlook it. Okay, you have made a mistake, and, and I think and that's that completely fault. fair. I, I mean, think it's fair cool. too. And, and yeah. look, I, I, I'm being upfront and honest about it. Um, no, you know what? Someone is going to get a superstar, and and that's that's whoever it is. I'm happy for them. I so me, I don't have a an NFL team. I've always just been Notre Dame. Like that's how I grew up. Just grew up Notre Dame guy. Never um, had an NFL team. No, no, I have no, like, I have no, like, allegiance. Like, I have teams that I like to watch, right? But I don't have, like, a favorite team. Um, but whoever picks Kyle will then now be my team. Um, lifelong fan for the last 10 minutes, that sort of thing. So, um, so I, that'll be my team and I'll follow them un, un, until Kyle is not there and then I'll find another team, right? Um, and that's the joy of, of kind of being an agnostic fan. So, um but yeah it's not a it's not a big deal so um um i actually i don't mind that at all because i that's yeah. how i'm kind of with the nba uh to be honest so uh and i i mean i'll say too selfishly 
selfishly, totally, like I hope Kyle Hamilton goes in the top five picks. He deserves to go in the top five picks. I believe he's a top five player in the draft. Selfishly, wouldn't mind if he dropped Steelers trade up to draft him. I'm a Steelers fan, so I, I would. I might see him in black and gold I've seen for it uh, next. Yeah, I've seen so, it mocked. So would love right. to do, would love to see him there. So all right, we'll come we'll come back with more stuff uh, next week. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we will talk to you very soon.